Thank you um, very much. It is really, I'm the lucky one today to be able to be here and talk to you. It's my privilege to be here, and they weren't kidding. There's a lot of sixth graders, and you guys are only one team, right? So, wow. A lot of you guys coming through the world. I will tell you that it's my opinion, and in this case, my opinion is right, that Sells is the best middle school in this whole area. Yeah. And I don't mean just Dublin, and I've been around to the other ones, the whole area. You really do have the best group of teachers. I learned that as they became my friends. You really do have the best group of kids. And I've learned that you know, from teaching eighth grade for so many years. Um, I was to teach sixth grade this year, um, but you guys got even luckier and you have Ms. Siegfried as your science teacher. So can't compare or can't compete with her. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about is the book that you just read and then how that ties into everyday things and how you might be able to put yourself into the main character, see how it feels. Um, the three C's that I have that I've kind of lived my life by and the cells pillars. I think this month is fairness and responsibility. And really, what does that mean? Um, I use this in case somebody's not paying attention or talking. I can tap them on the head with it. It's a little bit thicker than a meter stick, so it works better. But uh, no, I, I have to, every once in a while, I have to be careful. Um, my, my treatments messes with you. Sometimes you can fall over. Like I fell in a bush one day for no apparent reason. That was embarrassing. You get up, front yard after falling in the bush, what's the first thing you want to do? Make sure nobody saw you. <laughs> and there's the neighbors across the street going, Ken, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. These twigs sticking out of my ear won't bother me. But um, a little bit of history, just a little bit. I taught here for six years, and I got sick. I unfortunately um, got pancreatic cancer. And I know you guys have heard of cancer, and I know you've heard a lot about breast cancer. Uh, October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. November happens to be pancreatic, pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. It's unusual. Um, not as many people get it, but unfortunately it happens to be the deadliest of all the cancers. Uh, I have just a 6% chance of living for the next four years. That's how it is, just a number, okay? Uh, if I look at responsibility and your precepts, is that's something that I have. Never asked why. Now why me? If I had to have something, why this kind of cancer? I've never asked why because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. What I have said is I'm glad somebody else I know doesn't have it. And for those people that have these things, I pray for them. And one of the things that I've learned from you guys is how compassionate you are. Uh, you're very considerate. Um, I s do see a lot of the 55 Kai shirts, I, which I assume are from siblings that I've either taught or have known in the eighth grade. Um, but you guys give me inspiration and encouragement. And when somebody has something that's not right, however you want to define that, you can really help them out by just encouraging them and supporting them through kindness, through fairness and responsibilities, and the three C's. A little bit about the three C's. I have some of these printed up on a card, and I'm going to get more of these made up for you guys if you want one so you can have one. When I was eight years old, my dad stuck a little, just a little note, piece of paper, and he wrote the three C's, how people will remember you on it. And he had it down as conduct, how you act, character, what you are about, 
in conversations what you say. Um, and I believe they're still hanging in the comments, maybe as a big poster on one of the walls. Now, what does all that mean? You know, what does all that mean? And how does it apply to you? How does it apply to the precepts that you talked about in class with the book? And um, Augie's situation, and then your little assignment with your own precepts. Well, this is how life works. You will meet somebody for the first time, and more than likely you'll say hi. You might shake their hand, something. But that creates a first impression. And a first impression is something that you can only have one time, and that's it. You can never, ever have a first impression again, unless it's with somebody different. That first impression you make kind of sets the groundwork for what that person may think of you. You only have one shot at it, so you want to give it your best shot. The conduct, the character, and conversation all ties into that. The conduct, what you do, how you act. Now. You all have been given a responsibility to act a certain way in the classroom. Okay, and you're expected to act a certain way. You are expected to act a certain way when you're in the halls, when you go to lunch, gym, whatever. Okay, how you act. People see you. They see how you act. And you may not even know it. You may not even know it that they see you. The, one of the things that the people will say is the biggest act of kindness is the kindness you provide when nobody's looking. That means you're just not doing it to score points, to make yourself look good. You're doing something because it's how you feel. It's the right thing to do. Okay? It's the right thing to do. That's when your true character comes out. And Believe it or not, we see how you act in a lot of places. I get the best enjoyment out of running across my former students um, that are at Kaufman now, or graduated, when I see them at the mall. Because they'll look at me like, what are you doing at the mall? Well, I get out once in a while too. You know, I go maybe for a pizza, get something to eat. The only store I'm not allowed in is Brookstone. My wife won't let me go in there because I'd buy everything in it. But I see you guys at the mall, and a lot of times they didn't see me, but I saw how they acted, what they were acting when they were walking through, or they were in a store, their politeness, their conversation. Okay, uh, The mall is a fun place to run into people. The, uh, the movie theater is even better. Because the first thing when I run into them is they're kind of checking out to see if I know what movie they're going to watch. They're not trying to sneak into an R movie without anybody 17. But they always like, you're at the movies? I said, yeah, I come for the popcorn. Most of the movies I go to is for the popcorn because I go with my wife. And we do not have the same likes in movies. Okay, So that's why I go for the popcorn. If I want to go watch something else that I really like, I usually have to talk my son into going with me because she's my wife's not going to go. I can't talk her into it. But uh, m my other favorite place to run across you guys and see how you're acting is at uh, B Dubs. Walk in there, and again, the same reactions. Mr. Kaiser, what are you doing here? Well, I have to eat too. You know, or go for the sporting event or something that's on there. And I go there because I do have friends. Uh, teachers, you know, that go there, teachers from COP and go there a lot. You know, I run, can run into them. And it's just a fun place to go. They're not the best wings in the city, but, eh, you know, they'll pass. But um, I personally prefer roosters myself. But um, the conduct part is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, how you act with your parents, with your peers, 
with your teachers, other people in positions of authority. Uh, maybe you're involved in a church group. How, how you react in that group. Maybe you're involved in another organization. One thing I've found out since I've been sick and um, the kids posting on my Facebook page, uh, which is supporting Mr. Kaiser, um, is that your generation is far more compassionate and aware and wise than anyone would ever think you would be. I've been truly amazed at some of the things that have been said and how deep the wisdom and thoughts were from a 12, 13, 14 year old. I know adults don't, can't think that way and you guys have really brought that out because you could. And it's changed my whole opinion about my future. You guys are on the, right at the, the precipice of making this country very different for a good way. You don't know it yet, but I see it coming through your volunteer work, your work with your groups, how you do in school, your grades. You know, you guys are, you guys are gonna be it. And I'm very, feel very uh, confident. Now, character is a tough part. Who knows what character what do you think character means, somebody? What do you think character means? Yes, ma'am. Your, your personality certainly is part of character. What else? Yes, ma'am. What type of person you are? Yeah, what type of person you are. Now that can mean a lot of things. Okay. Uh, one way to look at character is, it kind of sounds strange, but in a cemetery. If you go in a cemetery and you look at headstones, you always see born on date and a date where they passed away. So you know at least that much about a person. When they were born, when they died. Okay, nowadays they're actually starting to put the QR codes on headstones, so you can take your phone, scan that, and it'll take you to a website to tell you about that person, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but the important thing there is not the first date or the second date. The important thing there is the dash in between those two. What did you do with your life? How did you affect other people? What did you accomplish for yourself? What did you do for others? That defines your character, okay? That's character. Character is not something you get through adversity. Adversity means something bad has happened that you're gonna have to deal with. Adversity doesn't create your character. It reveals it. It reveals what kind of person you are. How are you going to handle that adversity? And you've all had it already. Things didn't go your way. Whether it was with a friend, in school, maybe at home with parents. But regardless, you have to deal with it. Now, the good news is, through character and conduct and conversation, the pillars and reading things like wonder, you're given tools to help you deal with those things. Okay, that's the good news. The bad news is you're going to have these things hanging around for the rest of your life. Diversity or adversity that is going to happen. And they may be minor that you can deal with in an easy way or they could be really major. So the other part of your character that really makes the difference is what choices you make. And I know you've been told now for a lot of years, make good choices. You all know that, right? I mean, you all know you should make good choices. Is it easy to make good choices all the time? 
No, it's not. And I'm not going to tell you that just by following the three C's that life's going to be great all the time. Because that's not how it works. Okay, unfortunate things happen. My situation was unfortunate. Never asked why. Doesn't matter. Okay, but I can do things to fight it and to go along as far as I can and take care of my family the best I can. That I can do. There are things that are going to frustrate you because they're completely out of your control. Things that are out of your control when they happen that way that or might be bad, my advice to you is think about them and then stop. Don't dwell on them because if you can't change them, there's nothing you can do about it. It's okay to think about it, but don't dwell on it. Your conduct, how you act, is going to be a, an important part of that. How many of you have heard the term, life is not fair? How many of you believe that life is not fair? Okay. Well, I'm here to tell you that life isn't fair. It's not meant to be. Unfortunately, it's part of what happens to us every day. Simple example. I'll just pick on a name. Uh, John. Any Johns in here? Anybody's first name John? Because I'm not picking on you if it is. No Johns. That's amazing. I'll have to pick on somebody else then. I see a Florida Gator shirt here. That's reason enough to pick on them. <laughs> Last time I saw an LSU shirt, so they got picked on. Oh, another LSU. What are they teaching you? <laughs> At least it's not the other one, that one up north. Um, you know, let's say John was messing around in class, just not paying attention. He got yelled at a few times and it just wasn't working. Finally had to toss him out of class to stand outside or send him down to Mr. Santa Emma. And the teacher came back in the room and was so mad that said, okay, on Thursday you all have after school detention. I'm done with it. You have to report for after school detention, all of you. Is that fair? Probably not. But if that's the case and that happens, your responsibility is to be there. Take that detention. That's one part of the responsibility. Doesn't mean it's going to be fair. But that stuff's going to happen. You may not get the promotion you wanted at your job. You may not get the raise you wanted. You may not get the scholarship that you were hoping for, or you may not get the acceptance letter from the university you want to go to. All that's going to happen. There's not a lot of that that you can directly control. Maybe keep trying. Resubmit your application or something like that. Okay, but there's not a lot you can do about it. But that happens. For the rest of your life, you're going to have these challenges. And again, how you deal with them is going to make an impact. Define your character, and you do that with how you act and what you say. Another thing that my father used to tell me, which I, I kind of figured out later on, you know, when I was eight and he did this, I didn't automatically get it and understand it. It took a while to understand as I went through all the things in life that were happening to see what he was really telling me. He said, it's not how hard you hit the ground, it's how high you bounce back up after that's happened. And what he really means is how did you react to that adversity? It could be a test grade you got back that maybe wasn't what you wanted. Um, you know, looking at your precepts and things here, and Mrs. Doyle's making me use my glasses today since um, when you look at all of these, they're all very favorable, they're all very true, every one of them. Um, Augie's, you know, is his precept. 
if you really look into it and tear it apart, what he's saying is that I think as an individual, you all have the opportunity to make things better for yourself and for others. A simple kind word to one person in a day can make the world a difference to them. And I have proof of that. When I go out and look at my Facebook page and I look at the things that the kids have posted and the teachers, it might be something very simple, but the impact it has on me is tremendous as far as encouragement and hope and just keeping me in the loop of knowing what's going on here, especially from the kids, from you guys. The things you come up with to say amaze me. Every one of you is sitting on a pile of an awful lot of good. It's your responsibility now to make use of all that good. And make the choices so you don't stray from that. Is that going to happen? It might. Especially in high school. You may be asked to make choices. You're going to have to make some tough ones. The right choice is usually the hardest. Peer pressure. You've all heard about peer pressure. Peer pressure is tough. But if you make the right decisions, you're probably making the right one for you. Right now, you're at a stage where you have all these friends. Okay, you have a lot of friends. There's a difference between the three C's and friends and acquaintances. Acquaintances are just people you know. When something not so good happens to you, that's when you find out who your true friends are. How do they stick by you? What words of encouragement do they have? Is it kind? That really brings out who your true friends are. And personally, I have a gift. I've been given a gift that a lot of people don't really have a chance for. And I'm holding on to it because it is one of the most amazing gifts anyone could be given. And that is to be able to have conversations with you guys, my former students, and my teachers, my colleagues, that I can hear these things while I'm still alive. A lot of times this stuff comes out after a person has passed. But I am very, very fortunate to be able to come in here today and see you guys and think about getting back to teaching again so I could maybe talk Mr. Baird and let me teach eighth grade again, and get you when you're in eighth grade or whatever. But you're an inspiration to me. And part of that is because of the three C's and what I've heard. This is my first impression for all of you, meeting you for the first time. But I have to admit I cheated a little bit because I got a lot of good feedback or comments from your teachers about what a great group of kids you are. Okay? And they're right. I can, I can tell just by standing here and even looking at you. First day of class is the best day of class because I can pretty much figure everybody out. I know who I might need to tap on the head or not. But that's part of the process. Um, in your book, I know that there's a lot of different issues going on there. How many of you actually read the whole book? How many of you at least skimmed to get the important messages? Okay. The, uh, when you read something like that, it's important to be able to correlate it. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to me? And you can build that through the three C's. Your character is going to be the most important part of that. 
Maybe you can identify with what they're going through. Maybe not. But at the very least, you can identify with the people around them and what they, they may be going through. So your conduct and your conversation become important. Being a friend doesn't mean you're BFFs forever and you do everything together. I have friends that I haven't really talked to in many years, but they're still good friends and they support me and I see them once in a while. And that's a great feeling, you know, to run across somebody you haven't seen in 20 years and be able to, to sit down and talk with them. It's great for me to go to the mall and run into you guys. I think it's fun. You guys all hate it because it's scary to run into your teacher somewhere outside of school. But uh, it's nice to see you guys enjoying your other part of life. You know, that's if I can catch up to you, because usually when they see me, the group will turn around and start running the other way. But I'm still pretty fast. I can catch up to them. So the three C's, conduct, conversation, and character, you have it in you. You have to pull it out. It's very difficult to maintain a steady pace day in and day out, but you can do it over time. It becomes just part of you and who you are. And that'll be very important when you get into high school and college. And someday, if you become a parent, dealing with your kids or a husband or a wife, it's very important. The conversation part with my wife is extremely important. And it's important because it's honest. And she not only hears, but she listens. She may not like what I'm saying, and that's OK. We'll discuss it, and I'll drag it on at least long enough to know that I'm going to lose. and just go from there. <laughs>